I'm going to ask you to um, humor me. I'd like you to all pay, turn to page 40, if you would please, in your book of common prayer. This is something I feel compelled to do. Okay. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O God, Heavenly Father, who by thy Son, Jesus Christ, has promised to all those who seek thy kingdom and the righteousness thereof, all things necessary to their bodily sustenance, send us, we beseech thee, in this our necessity, such moderate rain and showers that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to thy honor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, I have felt, as I said, compelled to do that. I've been doing that all week, but especially this morning. Um, you could not see our pasture this morning because of the smoke from a local uh, wildfire, and ashes were falling on my truck as we got in truck in the truck to get there. So uh, we desperately need rain, so we need to continually do that. Now, I've told this story before, but I want you all to humor me one more time. My grandmother was a very devout woman. Uh, she was baptized and confirmed in the Episcopal Church, and she was a very strong woman in her faith. She was also a farmer. She raised soybeans, cattle, and tobacco. Now, Middle Tennessee was in the middle of a horrific drought, much like we are in today. And one Sunday before Mass, she asked her priest if he would pray for rain during the Mass. Um, he looked down at her, now she was a very tiny woman, and he simply stated, I don't do the weather. Our Gospel reading today, Matthew chapter 9, uh, verses 18 through 26, tells of the two miracles performed by Jesus, and it speaks simply of faith. Faith both seen and unseen, one deliberate and pur purposeful, one desperate and clandestine. I speak, of course, of the nobleman and the sick one. Let me read verses uh, 20 through 22. And behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. It's verse 21. And not just verse 21, but these four simple words in verse 21. If I may but, or today it would be, if I just. It is not, if I could just. I want you to think for a minute how often every single one of us have said just that within ourselves. If I could, ju if I could just, or if I would just, or if I, if I just could have. Or would have. If I could just grow hair. <laughs> or if I could just grow, period. <laughs> you know, that phrase, the more you think about it, is empty. It's of empty hope, or desperation, or even sometimes regret. Faith, now, is defined as the following. Confidence or trust in a person or thing or the observance of an obligation from loyalty, or fidelity to a person, promise, engagement, or a belief not based on proof. Now faith is a funny thing. On the surface, according to the definition, acquiring faith seems quite challenging and burdensome. But getting faith itself is really quite effortless. Acquiring faith in our Lord and Savior is really effortless. It doesn't cost us anything, and we don't have to lift a finger to get it. But practicing it, living it, you know, sometimes keeping it, now that's a big difference. That is what is hard. That is the challenging and burdensome part. And it is something that no matter how hard we try, we will never perfect it. Now there's one aspect of practicing our faith that is not mentioned much in churches today. And in fact, it may be done purposely ignored because it is the hardest part of our faith. And that is obedience. The second chapter in the first book of Kings, this is verse 3. Now this is from the NIV. And observe what the Lord your God requires. Walk in obedience to him 
keep his decrees and commands, his laws and regulations, as written in the law of Moses. Do this so that you may prosper in all you do and wherever you go. Now, obedience can be quite easy. In fact, some may boast to themselves that they are obedient children of God until his written word contradicts the whims and whims and whims of today's cultural roller coaster. Those who rewrite, bend, or redefine his written word to accommodate, placate, justify the actions of, and or beliefs of others have in reality fractured their own faith, dismantled it, and replaced it with a faith of doubt and disobedience. Obey, uh, obedience is trust and the elimination of doubt. Trust, no matter how much we are influenced, no matter how much we may question it, that God, both in his written word and his works in our lives, are perfect and above reproach and doubt. I asked Kathy when I was writing this, uh, when she thought of obedience in, in faith, the first, word out, out, the first words out of her mouth and the first word was consistency. The first thing that popped into my head was consistency in thought, word, and deed. We must be consistent and obedient in our actions and words. Living and professing our faith outwardly, even when we are told to sit down and be quiet. Shh! You God people are just not trending on Facebook right now. You cause anxiety and you're forcing people to flee to their safe space. Well, tough. When people's words or actions are contradictory to our faith in the living word, we, with temperance and compassion, must speak out. We must speak loudly and take action if necessary, even when it is distasteful. <laughs> like voting this week. I've heard it described that this election is like voting on whether you want to be shot or stabbed. <laughs> now relax, I'm not going to get political, but voting is a true test of our obedience. We're not really voting in a person, but a set of ideals. As obedient children of God, we must do our best to vote those ideals that best conform to God's laws and commandments. We must be consistent and obedient in our thoughts, even in doubt, even in despair, turmoil, pain, and suffering, knowing that through uh, obedience, God will show us mercy and deliver us through his grace. Obedience eliminates the word could in that phrase, if I could just. Like the sick woman who for 12 long years had suffered and was weakened by her illness, considered by said illness to be unclean and untouchable. She didn't doubt. She didn't question. She was obedient in her faith, knowing that she would be healed. Verse 23. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. We also must be have consistency and obedience in prayer. Obedient in our faith, knowing that God hears and listens to our prayers and that he does answer them. Obedience to him when he does answer them, even though it's not the answer we thought we wanted. Obedience to the wants and needs of others in prayer. Obedience in sacrificing the needs of ourselves to pray for the needs of others. Obedience that when we are asked, we clearly state that yes, we do do the weather. Amen. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus who said, it is more blessed to give than to receive.